It's time for Mr. Fundamental. Presented by no one. When I saw the Raptors and Blazers trade, I thought it was a good move, but I didn't think it was a massive upgrade for the Blazers. Outside of the financial reasons, Trent Jr. and Powell seemed like the same players, with Powell being the upgraded version. I was having discussion with some people on Twitter, and someone focused on the lack of deal for Aaron Gordon, and how this trade doesn't move the needle for Portland defensively. This video was requested, but after thinking about this trade for a bit longer, there's actually more to it than meets the eye, so credit to them. Powell's first two games were great examples of how he fits with the Blazers, so let's see what he can do for them. The most obvious skill for Powell this season is his lights out shooting beyond the arc. He's top 10 in the league in 3 point percentage around 45% and taking over 6 attempts per game. In the NBA, you can never have enough shooting and his presence makes life easier for both Lillard and CJ. This season, the Blazers sort of reverted back to their Harkless and Aminu days, playing two defensive forwards besides their stars. This also means defenses have reverted back to swarming Lillard and CJ. Screening the screener doesn't work here, and both Lonzo and Adams are swarming Lillard beyond the arc. They're comfortable doing that since Zion can help off DJJ on the weak side. Lillard releases pressure with a swing pass, and then they run a 1-4 pick and roll. The Pelicans switch, and while this seems like a clear lane for Lillard to drive, it's an illusion. Zion would rather DJJ take a shot, and Adams can help off Cantor as well. Lillard doesn't want any of that, and Ingram recovered well. The ball finds DJJ on the wing, with the hoist of a contested 3. Another pick and roll, and the Mavs swarm Lillard in the corner. He hits Mel on the pop. Hardaway Jr. does a good job to jab and play the passing lane to CJ, which triggers a skip pass to DJJ. See how KP backs off without contesting on his shot. This isn't a shot at DJJ, since he does well in other things and improves his shooting beyond the arc this season, but what I'm trying to show is that defenses prefer him shooting over the Blazers stars. Now swap him Powell in these positions, he'll make the defense pay for helping off him. On this possession, they now have both CJ and Powell's in the corner. The defense doesn't help off either one on the drive, and Lillard gets all the way to the rim. Here's a pin down for Powell, and all three defenders involved are focused on this action. This allows CJ to break down his defender, and get to the rim without any help defense. Blazers run a handoff with their two stars. Trent Jr. is face guarding Powell one pass away, so he can't help on this CJ drive to the rim. Powell isn't just a 3 and D guy though. Well, he was projected to be, but he's developing into a pretty good scorer as well. Playing within the Raptors' drive and kick offense, Powell was put in an easy situation most of the time by attacking off the catch. That is one way to maintain a high 3 point percentage. In transition, he gets the ball in the corner, and attacking off the catch means the defender is usually recovering. He blows by a Markinen and gets the reverse to fall. In semi transition, Powell receives a handoff. He hops on the catch, which forces Tucker to close out. This allows Powell to get a step on him and to drive to the basket. Playing next to Lillard and CJ, Powell is gonna get a lot of these off the catch opportunities, just like this kick out for the triple. Even if the defense contains well, like they do in this possession, Powell's threat as a shooter is enough to warrant a closeout, even a step beyond the arc. The drive will get him into the lane, collapse the defense, and finding the open man on the weak side for a three. While so far I've only shown how he's benefiting off others' creation, Powell has taken strides as a shot creator himself. The Raptors off the catch philosophy is good, but not so much when the defense recovers well in the half court, meaning players had to create for themselves. Here Powell leverages his shooting ability against a mismatch, which is why Plumlee had one foot on the 3 point line, despite his speed advantage. As we predicted, a drive by Powell gets him past his defender, and an open layup. Again, the offense is stagnant, but Powell blows by a decent defender in O'Neal, and dunks it home. Just a quick look at some numbers. The Raptors haven't been good in isolation since Kawhi left, which is why they also stray away from it. In those limited possessions, Powell actually grades out as the best isolation player on the team. Although he has the least possessions on that list, isolations are going to be reserved for Lillard and CJ to bail the team out. The reason I'm bringing this up is because Powell could replace either of the stars if they're out, just like Powell's first game with Portland. Powell's ability to become the second or third option comes in handy if injury strikes, but also maintain their lethal two guard offense. The Lillard and CJ duo is lethal, but they do need breathers, so Blazers will stagger their minutes. While they have the developing Simons, and Trent Jr. has been filling that role so far, Powell is the most established of them all. We've gone on about what Powell brings to the Blazers, so let's flip it around now. There are still doubts about Powell's shot creation, and he's definitely not a player that comes to mind when talking about scorers. Well, the Blazers have one of the better offensive systems in the league to cover for that. 
In the clips I've shown before, the Blazers run a double pin down to get Powell's man trailing. He does get run off the line, but look at the separation it created for his man. Now he's attacking a backpedaling big and nails the pull up jumper. Coming off the handoff, it forces a switch. Setting another screen leads to the miscommunication by the Raptors, leaving Powell open for the three. First, Powell comes off the pin down and gets the ball out on top. Another shadow pin down for Covington on the other side leads to the high post entry and a back screen for Powell as well. The defense gets so confused and leaves Powell open for the wing three. We can't forget about this clock set where CJ hands it back then gets a flare screen while another player gets a pin down on the other side. Catching it on the flare, then adding a jab gets the defender out of position, then using the screen for a quick trigger 3. Powell could easily be in CJ's position when one star isn't on the floor. If he shares the floor with both their stars, he would be the one coming off the pin down on the other side, putting the defense in a more difficult position. Same thing again, but the flare was covered well. This triggers a high post entry, and that same jab serves to get the defender trailing before going for the handoff. The big has the show, and a pocket pass to a rolling Nurkic gets them the basket. We also can't forget about the passing ability of Nurkic, and these take the burden off their stars from time to time. After the high post entry, they set a back screen one pass away. No dribbles needed on this possession, and they get a basket at the rim. Looking back at this, Powell could either be CJ or Lillard here, but he could also replace DJJ in the corner. Either the defense still rotates over, leading to an open three, or the help sticks with the sharpshooter and Powell, making this an easier finish. Similar set here, and CJ gets the back screen. Powell's defender has to sag back to protect the back door, leaving him wide open on a Nurkic dish. Just to further emphasize the benefits of the Blazers' offense, let's have a look at Powell's first two games. With Lillard out in the first game, Powell was basically their second perimeter option and put up 22 points on incredibly efficient shooting. What's even more interesting is that every single one of his made shots were assisted. It's a small sample size, but I would expect Powell to create less for himself in the Blazers' system meaning his already efficient production could get an extra boost. On the other side of the floor, Powell won't single-handedly make the Blazers' defense better. He is undersized for a wing, but that hasn't stopped him from being a good defender. His small stature could actually help with the Blazers, since they lack a backcourt defender rather than putting big wings like Covington or DJJ on guards. Coming from a good defensive team in the Raptors, he brings a lot of good fundamentals. On the pick and roll, he collapses into the paint to cover the roller. He sees Lowry doing the same, so he starts backing off and playing the passing lane on the kick out to the corner. Although he gets caught up on the screen, he sees Bane showing and picking up his man. He doesn't blindly chase his man and sits on the screener. His height actually creates a false sense of opening here, which is why Santoransky throws the pass and allows him to get the steal here. What I really like about his defense is the pressure he provides. He's guarding Anthony a few steps beyond the arc, and this pressure will make any ball handler uncomfortable eventually. When the magic hits Fournier on the wing, Powell is all up in his grill. You add in his active hands, and that's how he forced the turnover. We're already seeing this type of pressure in his first few games. See how he's stuck on Hood, and when there was a potential pin down, he turns into a top lock position, and then continues to stick with him. He's denying the pass three steps beyond the arc, and causes the offense to stagnate. Here's a screen in the handoff, and his pressure is what allows him to get around the screen, and tipping the ball loose on the handoff. Here he picks up his man near half court. This gets the player flustered and used too much of his offhand leading to the offensive foul. While Powell's ability to make reads on defense allows him to be part of the Raptors read and react schemes, this hasn't been as translatable just yet. Powell is watching the primary action when his man and Lillard's man crosses over. He calls out for a switch, but Lillard continues to pursue his man. The Raptors didn't score, but this will do damage in the long run. Both CJ and Powell close out on the same player. They're able to recover, but again, teams will take advantage of this in the playoffs. In semi-transition, the Raptors run a drag screen. Powell was expecting a switch, but that doesn't happen, and Siakam gets the and one. This is partly due to different systems between teams, where the Raptors rely on pressure, full effort contests, and knowing someone will cover for them. On the kickout, Cantor gets out of position on the contest. Powell covers for him with a contest of his own. Now Kiki is shooting 38% up until that game, and Ennis is at 43% from deep, so a shot by Kiki might be more beneficial than Ennis in the corner. Powell thinks that someone will close out to his man based on the Raptors' schemes, but not the Blazers, which is why Ennis had time to set his feet for the corner triple. It's not too big of an issue though, because it'll just take some time to develop chemistry, 
but the biggest gain for the Blazers is that they can put another defender on the floor without hindering their offense as much. So while Powell only seems like a better version of Trent Jr., there's actually a lot of other positive impact, like balancing their offense and defense, as well as a more consistent third scoring guard. Extending his contract would be key for the Blazers, but in terms of demonstrating a win now mentality to their loyal stars, this was a good move. Let me know what you guys think of his trade and anything else Powell will bring to the Blazers or the other way around. As always, thanks for making it to the end of the video. Remember to drop a like rating down below, subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you guys next time.